Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Sponsored by Ghostalware. And now, it's Dads, Lads and Kebabs. <laughs> Don't look at me, I've got a spot. Look at that. Oh, oh. I feel like I'm on 15 again. You look it. I don't. See what I mean? At least, the, the beard. at least the beard's coming back. You look like more of a man now than a little girl. So that's all right. It doesn't take long at all. That's, that's three weeks ago I cut it all off. Look at it. One, two, three. See you later. Oh, no, quatre. Yeah. So, guys, welcome to another episode of Dad's Lads and Kebabs. Oh, yeah, we are back. We, we, you always forget to say what we are, who we are, where we are. Come on, now, sort it out, man. Sort it out. So, yeah. We are dads, lads, who do not currently need kebabs. No, I do burger, but I don't kebab. I do burger. 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 No, not kebab, my friend. No, no. <laughs> oh, 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 do you remember when you used to eat those jalapeno cream cheese bite things? Oh, I oh, they used to fucking stink. I used to fucking love them. I have not had a takeaway. Like I used to order takeaway in my old house two, three times a month. It used to cost me like 50, 60 quid a time. So there's a lot of us. Since then, since I've moved into this house, I have not ordered takeaway. Just eat. What is just eat? No more for me. It's just no gone. No so, yeah, Z's fast food. I used to love my 18 inch pizza, cheese and garlic pizza. Oh, with uh, jalapeno cream cheese bites. Oh, they are the, the best thing on the planet. What is your What is your pizza preference again? Four cheese, if I can. Ooh. Four Ooh. cheese. With a garlic base, oh, and yeah. and and like sliced garlic lumps on top of it, nice, mate. That's 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 that the you one. See how much films and you should start fighting, man. You used to fucking stink. <laughs> oh, but then I sm I smoke cigarettes, then, so I imagine I stunk just as bad. Yeah, I smell of poo. You smell of ashtrays. That's fine. Oh, mate. <laughs> I am. Believe it or not, I am. Four years smoke free. I'm going to put an applause cheering thing over this when I edit this podcast. Oh, cigarette right now. No. So if someone offered you money to take a cigarette, would you do it? Not in a million years, no. I always said to so if, I, if I ever have another cigarette, I made a promise to myself that I'll never try to stop smoking again. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed smoking cigarettes. I'm not going right. to. I liked I liked it, but I chose a different lifestyle. I said to myself, look, you either quit now or you never quit. And I did. Mm. And I've never looked back since. So That's, that's a good good attitude to have. I like that. Mm. Lock, Plus 20 lock. a day. 20 a day now is about <clears> nine and a half grand a year. So. Yeah. Fuck you could buy a car it. every year for that. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? Oh, working. Gym in it. Gym in it. Gym in cricket. Not for me. Um, Not for me. Oh, I've been watching a couple of films. You know, I mean, I love the film. Yeah. Late night, late night film. Anyone wants oh, to I... watch? <clears throat> go ahead. Go, 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 go ahead. Oh, so, so, sorry, me. Sorry for interrupting. I would just like to say I have been watching... Um, a new series on Netflix. Now I do realise I am very behind. I started watching Wednesday. I am oh, yeah. halfway through that. Now, the girl that plays Wednesday, that Ortega girl, that General Ortega, something like that. I may be wrong. I'm not a doctor. Don't sue me. She she is absolutely amazing with her mannerisms, her attitude fucking love it she, she fucking some there must be a youtube video with little clips of her little sayings and her comebacks and all the little you know girlfriend 
Like my daughter's like that now. It is so fucking good. I I am actually, you know, annoyed with myself that it's taken this long to actually watch it. But yeah, halfway through it, on the way to finishing it. Hopefully they do a second series because it's brilliant. Ooh, okay. I've not seen it. I'll have to have a look. Yeah. I have been watching. Here's a good one for you. I've been watching Succession. I'm glad you said Session. Succession. <laughs> Sorry. Succession. Sucks. Not, uh, what? Not, not, not Succession Volume 2. Succession. All one word. Brilliant. Give it a go. HBO. Sky. Whatever it is, I watch it on now TV. So whatever it is. Okay. What is that about? It is about a billionaire family, really. Uh, it, that's as much, and they're just fucking, and they run a corporate company, and their dad is a fucking legend. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. Give it a go. Give it a go. I watched. Um, I watched a film last night called Wrath of Man. Jason Statham. Good film. I've not seen that. He's 55. Geezer's 55. He looks... looks, I look older than him. (laughs) Did you know that he used to be an Olympic diver for Great Britain? Because he was born in England, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Did not know that. Don't let your missus watch him. Not every woman I've ever spoken to. Oh, Jason Statham. Ooh. Fuck off. Like, like the fat blokes. <laughs> <sighs> My Mrs. Likes. <laughs> I was about to say she likes short men, but then I'm short, so doing all right. She likes yeah. the actor Martin Compston. Martin Compton? Yeah, Martin Compton. Okay. I know, proper random. What? My, what? I like. What's he been in? Um, Line of Duty few random things oh okay she likes Stephen Graham he's a good actor I wouldn't say he's like you know um I don't know who else she likes do you know like women some women like the Hemsworth brothers and all them sort of jazz my, my missus likes the dodgy looking ones <laughs> then again she married me so well me. there you go now she did marry you so I'm, I'm stripping off oh no he hasn't done that for a while. Da 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 da. Shake, shake that t-shirt. <laughs> How's your week been? Good. My week's been all right. Yeah, I've oh. realised that I am loving the air fryer a bit too much. <laughs> oh, fuck um, off. I'm feeling what? Don't swear at me. It's not oh. very nice. No, fuck I'm an off adult. for your fucking air fryer. What? They're just air? dicks. Air fryers are just dicks. It's like a, it's just a. Air fryers like when Tupperware. Air fryers like the new Tupperware. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like those. Do you remember people used to sell Tupperware? Are you thinking you? Used yeah, to you used to, used to have parties. You used to come around your house and do a party. Storage, <laughs> storage box parties. <laughs> Fucking taking the piss. Times oh, were, were simple back then. I oh, fucking hate. And you know. Any person that's got a fucking air fryer, they're a Karen. They're a Why? fucking miserable bastard. I fucking hate them. It's It saves them all your gas and electric oh, fuck for your off. oven. So we can't no. all be rich like you, Niall, man. I'm sorry. If you high high-priced job and all that. You know, some of us are on the bread line. And we, we need to save on food so we cook everything at once for 15 minutes. And then, then it's all you're crispy the, and we eat you're it. You're on the bread line. I'm fucking baking the bread. Um, <laughs> no, I don't I don't like air fryers. They take up loads of room. My kitchen is empty. It's a big... It's a kitchen. It's a big L kitchen. Put it in the cupboard. With an eye, with an eye. I don't know. I've got my microwave in my cupboard. I don't. I keep the microwave away. I don't even like them at the microwave. I know a few people that do that. Their microwave is on a shelf in the cupboard that they open. Yeah. That's don't quite like, a common thing now. Don't like anything on my sides. My sides should be empty. Mm-hmm. And clean. It's a work surface. <sighs> it's to work. Don't, work. Get me talk, don't get me talking about cleaning. I know you're the same. You're a very organised, rock steady square rigid Do you know what box I mean? yeah 
keep cleaning clean, box. Keep clean. Yes. Yeah. I am the same. I I love a clean house. This is like, do you know what I mean? For this for this show, we're talking about clean our houses, blokes. You got to pick up the game. I love a clean mm. house. Honestly, gone are the days of the big fat bloke that gets home from work and just sits on the telly or sits in front of the telly all evening drinking a six pack. Mm. Whilst not getting a six pack, I'm I'm like, I'm soaking my dishcloths, mate. That's what I'm doing. Bleaching stains out. <laughs> Wash, washing, washing my minkies. Oh, do you have a smelly minky then? <laughs> no, they're clean minkies. I, what, f- what is a minky? Can I just ask for everyone that's listening what a minky is? A minky is a half microfiber, half sponge. So it's microfiber one side, sponge on the other, a bit rougher. But it's, it's like a, and it's a cloth as well. So scrub, 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 flip it over, wipe. It's brilliant. It's wow. fucking brilliant. You've live and learn, mate. I have a cleaning caddy now. I have a caddy, a special box that's got all my cleaning stuff in all the way around. I just carry it around the house and then do my jobs. Okay. Oh, mate. Okay. Future. The future of the modern man is actually modern men do cook and they do clean. Yeah, I, I I can tick those boxes. Mm, see, yeah. exactly. How many blokes out there today are the ones that don't clean? I am. I would go around someone's house to clean for them if they wanted me to. I'd, I'd fucking love to do that. And he'd do it in an apron, boys and girls. Oh mate, I would. Clean him in the buff. <laughs> do you know like those TV programs where they go into like proper dirty houses? Yeah. I'd uh, fucking love to do that. The hoarder houses. Oh. Three skips yeah. out the front. In you go. Just, you know, put everything in there. You can I'm see the carpet sensitive. is rotten. Ooh. Oh. Rip it out, mate. Fucking rip it out. Oh. You, ever used a, you ever used a rug doctor before? Yes, at work. Oh. Fucking heavy bastards, they are. They're heavy, but they're good when they got going. Yeah, you can see all the water swirling around, all the dirty you water. You see the going. line, the line in the carpet. It's just like yeah, dirty bastards. <laughs> it's like AMS ASMR for the for your Space. eyes. For cleaning, for cleaning as well. Oh. Space sexual. I just don't understand. Like, do you know when you go to a restaurant and the toilets are dirty? Like, oh, I hate that. And you think I'm in a restaurant. I'm about to drop between you know. 50 to 70 quid on a meal and I'm going fucking to I ain't going out with you that's too much for me carry on Why? sorry that's not that's too much t- fuck off you can buy a meal for 12 pound we don't no we don't do two for tens every fucking day Michael no one one meal for 12 average burgers like 12 pound in most pubs yeah, so but, yeah but I, I, I'm see I'm pretentious it's not pretentious it is not <laughs> It's not at all. I like, free course I like nice meal. food. Oh, I don't have three courses. I have two course. Yeah, I'm two courses. Depends how full you are. Depends on depends on the day whether I have a like a starter or a dessert. And I always look at both sides of the menu first because it's like, well, if they've got good starters. The only the only time you have a starter is if you get to the restaurant and you are starving. Otherwise, I don't think you have a starter normally because no, you're ready. No, for, no. You have your meal ruin, in about twenty minutes. Most people ruin their mains with starters. Though. They do because, because they're you fucking fill up on them. Exactly. And it's like going shopping when you're hungry. It's something you don't do. You, you don't, shouldn't shouldn't do that because you buy everything. Eat, eat something before you go shopping. Literally, have something to eat before you go shopping because it's fucking terrible. I've done it so many times. Walk around the supermarket, fucking starving, and be like. I'm buying this and I'm buying this. I'm going to eat it in the car on the way home. Like, it's fucking dreadful. Bueno chocolate bars for me. The eight, oh, the eight pack. Oh. Fucking eight pack. You fat bastard. Uh, I am fat, yeah. I used, to, I used to munch them on the way home. Or oh, leave, leave Tesco, go to my car, put my bags of shopping in the boot, take the bueno out, sit in the front of my car, eat the eight. Sounds so dirty. <laughs> eat, eat the eight bars. Check the mirrors, make sure nobody's watching me. And then I slowly put it in my mouth and crunch. To be honest, I'll level you on that. I think. And I eat them all. 
and then I go think, home. <laughs> I think Kinder Brenos. Fucking bird, I'm going to come and shoot your bird. Last one. We can count. I can level with you on Kinder Brenos. I think Kinder Brenos are where I learned to eat, eat Fanny Man. Because I used to. I used to, that's, I used to bite them in half so neatly. Yeah. Just just get the end off, pull it off, and then lick out all the ridges. The chocolate. <laughs> and then eat the biscuit at the end. That's wow, skill, that's, that's so dirty. Oh, mate, it's real fucking dirty. But I'm sure the ladies have a, appreciated over the years the, uh, the fatness in your body that has, has been craving that chocolate so you think women like a fat man i do women do you like a fat man do you like i think not, uh, not a fat man but a, a chubster well-figured, a well-figured i would say yes and i'll give you my reasons why firstly they know they can eat what the fuck they want and he probably won't judge because he will join you eating said food secondly if he is a gym goer, like a fitness freak, he's never taken you out for a meal. You have to do things with him around his gym sessions. He's always prepping his food, getting his shakes ready, you know, his supplements. He ain't got time to go go for a walk, go shopping, go out to a cafe to get a coffee because he's not allowed. He's either in the gym or, you know. So... You know, and thirdly, they're no fun to cuddle because they're rock hard. Plus, they make you feel inferior as well. They're rock hard, but usually one thing isn't rock hard. No, it depends on how how many roids they're on, you know. I mean, although I, not... I think women prefer a funny, all-rounded, just general bloke. I think funny beats fit any day. It does. Eventually, because they're not going to be fit forever, I don't think. And then they're just going to be boring to fucks. I listened to this on a podcast the other day, and it was it was basically saying that. Do you remember all the girls that, all the girls that thought, you know, that were busy chasing, you know, the gym goers of the town, the drug dealers, you know, the the big names, the big I ams. Yeah. And now they're sat, now they're sat on a shelf, and they're the ones that want to settle down now and have kids, but. You know they're pro. You know they're in their late thirties, forties, fifties, and there's, it happens in every generation. It doesn't stop. It. It's probably happened in my generation, your generation. It's, c- it's continuous, yeah. And then now it's like they're sat on a shelf and they're thinking, you know, all those, you know, all those people that they rejected over the years, the decent ones, the ones that are doing well now and happy, and they found what they were looking for. You yeah. know, those people are sitting on the shelf now. So I think fuck them. Fuck. When will they? When will they learn? When will these women learn? I don't I think they re- do. I was rejected definitely a few times. I was definitely rejected a couple of times. I got told I was too nice. Oh, I hate that. Oh, you, I was told I was person. too nice while in my relationships. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> I'm not cooking you dinner tomorrow. Then. Sorry, you can we'll fuck off. Nice. Yeah, yeah, cook your own. Yeah, go shop yourself. <laughs> that whole generation of women love a bad boy and all that. The thing is, the bad boys these days are normally 35 still wearing tracksuits. Yeah. You know? Those, those, you know, the skinny ones, that, the skinny ones that smoke weed and still wear tracksuits and drive a polo. It's like, <laughs> you were ch- and, not, and you look at these women and go, you were chasing that for near enough 10 years. You've yeah. had a child with one of them, one of them. Yeah, Skinny and he don't, he don't pay you fucking maintenance. Oh, does he fuck? Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Oh, he's, he's like... Normally, they're either fucking... They're van drivers for, like, somewhere shit like fucking... Every. <laughs> every. Every delivery drivers. Fucking they're steals your stuff. <laughs> they're working... Or they're working fucking quick fit. Or, do you know what I mean? Those skinny weed smokers, that they, those gorgeous women were chasing for years. So like, you dickheads. Yeah, you but, but them, them gorgeous shit, women man. aren't normally gorgeous anymore because i i believe i was one of them i was the black swans you know the 
what's that what's that phrase ugly duckling syndrome i fucking love that all the all the girls that were at school and they were the popular ones all the boys are after they were fit and you know they they were developing earlier than others and like everyone was after them you see them in like 10 years later like end of their 20s and it's like ha <laughs> look at you they've totally changed you know nothing wrong with putting on weight i'm a fat fuck you know but they have put weight on it doesn't look that good their, their skin is terrible you know and this isn't woman bashing this is just how it is they've got all these yeah. kids with, diff both with, sides. with, both with sides different with them. different men yeah exactly and that and the lads were, the, were at school they were the popular lads you know the, the everyone wanted to they're be friends ones, they're with they're the ones doing shit now though the lads yeah they are people. yeah i i can look on like say facebook and, and, the, and I, I know in my mind and, and facebook i know who them lads were and when i look at them now i think fucking hell you fell off you fucking fell off hard yeah i, I was i was skinny I, I had a boy body up until about the age of fucking 20 and then i found food i found pork pies <laughs> honestly and then honestly i started training and i was addicted to the gym like not just addicted but fucking addicted to the mm. point where i was lifting heavy at a very young age and then i just i slowed down and i started to just take my time with it and enjoy it and do other things and train in yeah. different areas but I spent so many years on my own. So many. I had a couple of failed relationships, don't get me wrong. But I spent so many years on my own, and they're, they're, they're good years. I enjoyed just being, being me, being content with myself, going places by myself, going on days out by myself. When you wanted to, yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing I never did, which I see a lot of people do now, is go on holiday on their own. That seems Can't, to be so popular. Couldn't do that. I, I don't could, think I could either. No. I'll be too worried about do I speak to people? Where am I going? Like sometimes we spoke about this before. Sometimes you talk yourself out of doing things mm -hmm. when you're on your own. If you've got someone to go with, you're ninety nine percent of the time gonna actually do that and follow it through. But if you're on your own, you're like, Oh, maybe. Oh or you find excuses not to do things and that happens to everything in life. Mm -hmm. And but I think that would be me. Like I know somebody was going on holiday to America. They got to the airport with their friend they were going with and their the friend they were with their visa was not filled out correctly and as they went through the checks to get on the plane it come up failed so then there's no way this person can then go to america and get on the plane so my friend was like well you gotta make a decision do i not go i spent all this money planning things paying for things when i get there the flights or, you know, do I go on my own? Do I go to another country, massive country, not knowing what's going to happen? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to speak to people? You know, I don't know what I would do. Obviously, you, I'd want somebody to just pick me up, put me on that on that seat on the plane, Fuck and then not, yeah. not let me out. Because I'll probably, not necessarily, I would say, no, I'm not going, but that's what i would probably want to do because i'd want to enjoy this experience with my friend because we'd been talking about it planning everything and it was yeah. like that's that's what the option was and to change it i think that would be so difficult uh -huh. but yeah they did go in the end i know i know a couple of people have actually gone to america on their own on purpose <laughs> and it's like oh wow fair play because they've got things to do sightseeing locations that they want to go to and they've just gone and done it and they've met a couple of people on the way you know i think it's quite pop quite popular now going away on your own it's like because you can you can do it i i wanted to do it for years years and i always had the money to do it so i don't know why i never did and then obviously my wife is just she's the planner and i'm talking the planner of everything like mm we could be going on holiday next year and she already has an itinerary of what we're doing on each day and that, that fine and that's not bullshit it's just fucking that much of a planner does that not bother you are you happy with that i love it absolutely love it i wouldn't have it any other way 
no other way at all. I learned. I Fair pushed enough. against. I pushed against routine for so long and said, "No, nope, I don't want a routine. I don't want this. I don't want plans." And now, when we have weekends as a family where we haven't got much planned or we're not doing much, and we're in the house and we're like, oh, "Fuck, are we doing? What are we doing?" It just turns bad. It's not not in not arguments, but it turns like, "Oh, we don't know what to do. We've got no plans." And I'm so thankful to my wife at that point when she goes, "It's okay." We've got this. I've got it covered. We're going to do this. Because fucking that's it. The day's planned. And we fucking have a full day out. And it's the best day. Like, she finds things. She finds deal. Like, my wife is the deal hunter. She'll find the best deals. I'm yeah. Talking, you know, 99% off sort of sh- deals. She's fucking <laughs> brilliant at it. But yeah, I wanted to do it. Like, for years and years, I always wanted to go to Venice. Always wanted to go to Venice. You should. In fact, I am going to say to you, after we get off this podcast, look at flights to Venice and look how cheap it is to go, because you you would you would fucking love Venice, of all the buildings and shit that you like and all the exploring that you could do in Venice and the graveyards that's in the centre of Venice and that stuff, you'd fucking love it. Is there land in Venice? Oh, not on the island itself. Well, there is land, yeah, because you fucking stay in a hotel. Yeah, and you've oh. got Saint Marco Square and all that sort of stuff. Okay. And she's got the big square and everything else. But you would love it. The streets are like this wide. You <laughs> walk down on the But there's shops. So there's like a butcher's here and a coffee shop here. You'd love it as well because there's fucking coffee everywhere. Like, not just espressos, by the way. Really good coffee. It's literally your favourite. It's coffee, four cheese pizzas, and fucking old buildings and shit. You'd four cheese it. pizzas, old buildings, and coffee. Nice. <laughs> Honestly, go and look at flights. If, if you if you play, if you're thinking about planning a trip but you don't want to spend crazy amounts of money, you'd get a return flight for about seventy quid. You'd get a night okay. in a bit in a nice hotel, and I'm talking a nice hotel for like maybe like hundred quid a night. So if you, and you could go for you could go for two nights easy. Yeah, it's quick, it's cheap, and you don't have to spend. You don't need to spend a lot of money when you're there. You don't because the sightseeing is all pretty much free. It's all free. All the things that you do, don't yeah. do a gondola ride because you go on a you go on a water taxi anyway. You got a water bus anyway, and that's pretty much like a gondola. Um, yeah, you said that before. Yeah. The Rialto Bridge and all that. Honestly, do it. I want to go back. I said to my wife, I want to go back. All right, it's yeah. honestly. Me and best. you can go now. Just do it, well, mate. Me and you honestly, go. We'll go. I'll go Venice. Buy some kebabs in Italy. <laughs> oh, kebabs in Italy. Italy. Tell you what, we get ten thousand. We get ten ten thousand downloads. Ten thousand downloads off one episode in in two weeks. Before <laughs> I can go. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just hit seven and a half thousand downloads today, people. So thank you so much. You are awesome, seven and thank and you for a half thousand. thousand. Downloads. Yeah. Whoever you are, people, honestly, you're fucking mental. We love you. It's fucking yeah. brilliant. And I know there's some random downloads in some far off places in the world. Because we've gone through them before. Mm. I think when we hit 5,000. And uh, yeah, some crazy places that you think, wow, someone has downloaded our podcast and is listening in a language they don't even understand. <laughs> so fair play to you. Thank Dude, you so much. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We love, I love it though. Fuck me, I love it. I love chatting about fucking random bullshit. Yeah. Because that's all we are. We're just random. We're fucking... <laughs> We have random, we have rants, we have agendas. Yeah. And, uh, do you know what? And at that note, I think it's probably time to talk about the big agenda this week. What? More more random bullshit? No. <laughs> no? The coronation. <gasps> coronation Street? It's Coronation Day. It's oh, Coronation the, Day. Oh, King Charles III being coronated. Is that a word? King Charles III. Coronated? It sounds, yeah, but it sounds like he's being made into chicken. It does, yeah. Yeah, no. It could be Coronation Chicken, Coronation Street, or King Coronated. Charles is a good one, you know. He's a good one. He's a good one. I've, I've done some homework on Charlie. Charlie, yeah. he, he's, 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 I bet you have. <laughs> bit of Charlie. Shit. He's done uh. cocaine. He's not done cocaine. <laughs> Never, done cocaine. Never done cocaine. So... What are you doing for the the coronation day this weekend? What are your plans for well, it? Well, I've got a bit 
a busy schedule of things to do anyway with family to start off. Okay. But then we're going to have, so we're going to watch it at home. We said we might go out, but we're going to watch it at home. My wife is a true royalist. And all that jazz. She do we know it. what, do we know what time it starts? I'm telling it, it's, yeah. It starts about half 10. This half 10, yeah, 11. Starts. Yeah. In fact, I think it's probably going to be earlier because, I've seen there's people already camping out already, so... Apparently it's going to rain on Saturday, though. Rain all weekend. It's bank holiday, mate. Of course it's going to rain. It's fucking... Okay. Can, yeah, we can, true. We can work with the rain. That's the thing. All these years of being in Britain, why have we not learnt just to go, actually? It's only it's rain. It's about the rain. But the problem is with the UK, right, is we don't cope with weather at all. No. Side tra- Sidetrack, I know, but we do not cope with weather. There's Snow. no... There's not enough. There's not enough indoor activities in the UK. There isn't. Like of all the spaces that you can go to, there is fuck all inside. They should start doing fucking theme parks inside. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Fucking awesome. Well, they do like indoor snowboarding, ski, and that sort of thing, don't they? Indoor it's skydiving, they do now, which scares the s- fuck out of me. But what, indoor skydiving. Yeah, I've done it a couple of times. I fucking hate it because the first time I fell on my head. Well, I was floating in the air because my angles were wrong and I went blah, blah, upside down. That fucking hurt. And then the, the second time I couldn't breathe and I was I was like floating and it was just so powerful in my in my nose and mouth area. I was like, <gasps> so I, I just couldn't your, breathe. I fucking, I fucking hate it. Yeah. And my face. I, I, horrible. Absolutely <sighs> horrible. All in. Oh. No, no. Have you ever done it? Indoor skydiving? I haven't. I've done. Any, I've done anything, everything extreme. But I haven't done. I mean, I want to do it for real. I really want to do it for real. It's probably the best thing you will ever do in your life. But, and I'm sure I would love it. But I am obviously scared of of falling, not heights. And uh, I would shit myself. I'd have I, to be pushed out. This is the weirdest thing. But I get excited by heights. My feet. My feet have got eyeballs when there's heights because my feet start to hurt for some random reason. My feet are like, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck down. And my mind's like, <laughs> no. no. Keep going. <laughs> Just keep going, mate. Just go higher. I love fucking heights. I say that I I act like I don't, but then it's get me on a height and I'm like, I'm all over it. Someone says, no, I'll go and climb, go and climb that roof for me. I'm like, yep, done. I like, I like heights. If it's a safe environment for me to stand on, like you could put me on the moon. As long as it's a big area, I'm not going to fall off. Don't bother me. Hot air balloons, I've been in, you know, all that shit. Top of mountains, high buildings. Doesn't bother me as long as the surface is big that I'm treading on. If I it's not, had... I'll die. <laughs> That's the thing, right? You... I had a friend who, who basically, do you know Northampton bus station, the old one? Yeah. Well, I used to work with him in the Brad Law in Northampton. And he shimmied. He shimmied himself up, you know, like the, in between the columns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shimmied all the way up and went into the offices at the top. But nothing. Just shimmied with his back and his feet on the wall. Yeah. Oh, wow. Shimmied and then didn't realise how he was going to get down. Because he was like, I can't get back into the shimmy. No. Otherwise, you just go, woo! <laughs> had to ring some security to come and let him out. Who's that? What's that urban explorer? The one that does all the height? Is it Ali something? Ali Law, yeah. Fucking the heights he does. Fuck yeah. Me. Cranes. He climbed the stealth. But yeah, I'm friends with Ali. I tried to get him on the show once, but he's always busy all over the world. So, but he's literally, he does fucking mad stuff, doesn't he? Like, but yeah, he does. But we did have Ricky on, didn't we? His friend who does all that as well. Episode Ricky, thirteen, Ricky, Ricky Brewer. Brewer. Yeah, he's now he's now found religion. He is totally no, he seriously has proper hmm. proper U turn. It's like wow, he was, a, he was um crazy motherfucker. <laughs> he was going through some shit, weren't he? When we spoke to him, he was going through yeah, some he was. cases and all sorts of shit. That's what that's what they do. They go on these places. They they stay in when they close, and then they come out and play, and then they get caught, and they get fined, and they have to go to court. And they get banned from all these places, and you know, it's just boys I've having fun. You yeah, know, that alley of the things that he's been doing. Like, he went across that canal bridge, you know, the um, 
fucking is it in Birmingham? The canal bridge that literally goes over the top and it's where canal boats go over. And he fucking did it on a bodyboard, just fucking. Oh yes, he did. Yes, yeah. and he nearly like, fell over the edge a couple of times. Like you fucking yeah. mad man. Yeah, he was paddleboarding, wasn't he? That little yeah. narrowed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he needs adrenaline all the time. It's crazy, man. I think, like that's addictive for some people, though, right? That's fucking. I think once you get it, once you get it, you need it. It's like a drug. Oh yeah, yeah. I get it. I get that bit because for me, and this is sounds so bad, but for me, like having a fight, and I'm not talking street fighting. I'm I'm talking like when you get hit in the face in a boxing ring, for example. It's like whoa. It's like a switch turns on and says, "Oh, this is allowed. We can do this." <laughs> and honestly, I'm ne- like sh- everything shakes everything like your knee starts to tremble and everything and then you just go and i think i think adrenaline is amazing you see yeah. how far some people can get on adrenaline especially been in some really tough situations like i fucking, i think adrenaline is so underrated of what it can do to people like you're practically fucking you're, you're living your true self i think when you're under adrenaline yeah, but the come down is is too big sometimes for a lot of people, and that's why they go like extra, extreme extreme uh, sport people. Mm-hmm. I'll do that again because that was shit. Extreme sport people, they need that buzz all the time, like we said. But then the come down is just a lot of them go into depression because they can't keep it, they can't sustain yeah. it, and that affects is- their home life and. I follow that guy from... Do you remember the TV show, Dirty Sanchez? Yeah. I can't remember his name. Wasn't that the Welsh jackass? The Welsh, the Welsh jackass. And it, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was ten times worse, the things that they did. Like, some of the stuff they did was fucking, like, you think you're sh- you should be dead. Criminal, yeah. <laughs> like, and I've watched it, the guy from there. I think his name's Rick or Rich or something like that. But he's turned his life around he's full-on zen mode now like lives a very peaceful calm life lives in a little cottage with his dog and fucking um just and you just think you either go one way or you go the other yeah you either keep going or you totally like to say change totally change your life around do you remember we had uh kurt on our show kurt roberts who did the photographer photographer Kurt his work is fucking mental if people like go back a few episodes you'll find him somewhere on our posts his photography is is fucking beyond real some of the stuff I've seen him shoot is mental it's like the location he's been to he looks really good yeah uh yeah anyway he um he I think I'm sure it was him who knows one of the dirty Sanchez boys because obviously he's Welsh and then Wales. Yeah, I'm sure he's done a few posts with them before he spoke to them. So yeah, like you say, they've, you can't sustain that level of uh, craziness all your life because like you say, you just end up dead mm-hmm. and your family won't be able to to keep up with your your activities, I don't think, you know, especially if you've got kids. But you're putting your, yourself at risk every day, doing stupid stunts. Oh, I don't know if Daddy's coming home tonight. That's nah. Do you know who that reminds me of? That reminds me of. Do you know? On speaking of Jackass, do you remember? Remember Bamajera, the skater. Yeah, yeah. He's nearly. He's nearly virtually like he's gonna. He's gonna be dead within months, years. Like he obviously, I know he lost his friend Ryan Dunn. Yeah, yeah. And he's just spiraled after that into alcohol and drugs. And he's come back a few times and he's fucking detox and come back. And then he just hits, he like hits proper. Now he's like having like psychotic episodes and everything. Like he's on the verge of just losing it all. It's bad, isn't it? When, when you see people like that and the level they were and they just drop so much because of, you know, life basically. Everything at his feet. The whole world at his feet, and just like little yeah. actions can just fucking snap your life. Mm. But then but, I think that's we're, we're all like that. We all have a tolerance line. We all fucking do. Yeah, I think it's how you deal with it, though, isn't it? Your circumstances can can. Um, what's the word? I don't know. what I'm trying to say. 
your circumstances do affect your surroundings. Yeah, that do. <laughs> Thank that you, Niall. <laughs> yeah, to how you react. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it's not good seeing anybody like that. No. But I'm sure there is a lot of people, and just even normal people that haven't been these successful people on TV. Everybody suffers in life, reacts differently to the bad things that happen to us now and again, to family, to friends. But again, like we always come down to in this this podcast, it's about talking to people, letting people know how you're feeling. You know, you're not alone. There are people that can help, your friends, your family. Strangers a good a good way of uh, trying to help you as well, I think. Mm-hmm. So and just ask, just ask people. With with social media as well, is one of the things that you see is you see all these people that you look up to, and you see them post about their all their high life and the, all the good things they do, but yet now they've started to post about their dramatic lows as well behind mm. the returns, behind the deals, behind the money and the cars and everything else that goes with it. Now you, you see the life that they live behind that. Like a case that I've followed recently is um, Dapper Laughs. Yeah, yeah. He has changed his life completely to the point where he was like, I'm, I was a heavy, heavy drug addict, heavy, like needed to get off alcohol. Um, a fucking like and massively changed his life. And you think to yourself, all these people that you look up to and they cause such a stare in society at one point and now you think they're just fucking regular people. Yeah. Well, he's just started up. He's He's got a tours coming up next year, I think, hasn't he? That he's selling tickets to at the moment. Dapper. Comedy tour. Comedy tour. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's already sold out loads of venues all over the UK for next year. So that's, you know, fair play to him. My <laughs> comedian at the moment who I like the UK or do you know Scouse guy is it, is it Paul Smith is that his name yeah Paul Smith yeah he stands up there it takes a fucking love him he's, he's funny on TikTok him. yeah 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 he's quite, and I, everywhere I, I love his shit I fucking love his shit he's fucking hilarious yeah. he calls out of the crowd yeah it, that's basically his act isn't it he'll go around mm-hmm. people <laughs> yeah I fucking he is funny the clips that you see on Online, it's just like wow. He's actually in Northampton soon, but it, it sold out a long time ago. Yeah, he he sells out really quick. I'd never heard of him until TikTok, though. Mm-hmm. You know, he might be massive, but within like the normal reality of like who we know, comedians, he's not like Jimmy Carr and you know all them. But you just don't see him because he's on online. He's not on TV. He's not on Dave. He's not on all these BBC Two comedy shows. You don't see him. I have at the moment. I have comedians coming out of my ear of all the ones I'm watching. That, at the moment. that must hurt. Oh, coming everywhere. So another one is <laughs> Ali Wong, the Chinese lady. Who, um, she's fucking hilarious. Check her out. She plays a lot. Of, she's in a lot of TV shows on Netflix, but she does. She has a couple of specials as well. Okay. Obviously, there is Bert Kreischer. His new one's out. Have you watched any of his yet? Who? Bert Kreischer. Who's that? I went to see I told you about it. I went to see him in London recently. Did you? Yeah. Did we talk uh, about that? Homework. Homework for you is... Bert Crusher. Bert Kreischer. Kreischer. Right. Right. His first one's called The Machine. His second one's called The Secret Time. He's got four specials. Yeah. Secret Time. Razzle Dazzle. Honestly... Just homework tonight. Just please, it takes you an hour. Just walk, go and watch the machine. Where are they? You. Netflix. They're all on Netflix. Okay, I might put that on after this then. You, you'll be in stitches. It, and if you fall into that trap, you've got four hours worth of laughter. So you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be ringing me like my, my face hurts. I've been laughing that much. He is a dad comedian, a straight up dad comedian. But his life is a roller coaster of what you know. He's fucking, he's done. Please go and watch him. Okay. Home, homework for everybody on this podcast is go and watch all of Burt Crash's back catalogue on Netflix, all his specials. You won't regret it and you'll fucking have, the, you'll have a ball. Promise you, I promise you, you'll go. Fair enough. Yeah, that was good. That was good. 
That's good. I will he's, I will check that out. Honestly, he is yeah, he was a comedian I grew up with. Like my you know, my brother introduced me to him and fuck me, like we and then so yeah, so the the story behind it, I'll tell that story. The story behind it was my little brother showed me a video on YouTube of this guy. Um, and he was doing like a live set in Amsterdam and it was hilarious. And then he had a special come out. And we watched his special. Then we waited two years for the next special. Then we waited three years for the next special. Then we waited four years. And secretly, by my brother's back, this was his first UK tour. First UK tour. So for their birthdays, I bought both my brothers a ticket. And we went down to London. And I told him about it. First UK tour, sold out minutes. Like, I didn't even know he had this kind of following in the UK. I thought it was just us. Turns out... <laughs> He's got like hundreds of thousands of people that want to see him. Okay. Um, but yeah, fucking hilarious guy. Hilarious guy, yeah. So we went down to London, had a day out. Um, went to the Hard Rock for food. Ate shitloads of food, drank, some, drank a few beers. Had a good day. It was good. Nice. All right. But anyway, back to the coronation. Fucking hell. Oh yeah, that small thing. Fuck it. That's our ten minutes ago. Sidetrack. Sidetrack. Talking about something so small. We've been around the fucking world, (laughs) and we're back in London. (laughs) Yes. So so I will. I will be watching it. I'm at work all day, and we have been decorating the the house, the street, or the outside, the gardens. So obviously we're in a village and village village life is what you expect it to be people sticking their nose into your life people always watching out the window i'm just glad i just work there and i don't live there but anyway oh. it it will look nice when you drive through and all the houses and the all the gardens have got bunting over and you know love it we've got, it, know. In. We've got it we've got it in our village love it yeah Oh, you live in a village as well, yeah. So, and but yeah, so I'll I'll be watching it. I I I will enjoy it. I do like watching royal momentous occasions, like the Queen's funeral, like Harry and Meghan's wedding, Philip, not Philip, uh, Prince William and Kate's wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, all them sort of thing. Diana's funeral, Queen Mother's funeral. All the basically all the the big things that happen. That they they change all the TV scheduling, so you have to watch it. So yeah, I'll be in a tux all day. Nice. I think it's important that people do watch it, whether you like the Royals or not, because it is it's history. It's part of history, yeah, of course. Of course, it is. Massive part. You know, in about ten years' time, William will be king, probably. You know, it depends on how long his dad lives. And I just can't wait to be king. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Jungle book. But then, I think, I think, I mean, I, I like the royal family. I do. They're not all good. There's the bad points. People moan yeah. about how much the coronation costs and all that sort of stuff. And oh, yeah. Like, yeah, people have been moaning about that, haven't oh, they? Oh, God. And people talk about, you know, what do the royal family do for us? Actually hell of a lot they bring in billions like, a year don't they like hell for the of country a lot, right and whether you support them or not this is your royal family all right support them and if you don't keep your opinions to yourself because at the end of the day don't spoil it for the people that do support them that actually are going to enjoy this occasion that actually most people i i wasn't born in the last coronation you weren't fucking no. born so this is again something that we you know we've had loads in our lifetime. Fucking like COVID, Queen exactly. dying, coronation. Yeah. So three massive events that we've all been able to enjoy. I mean, people say like you, like you're saying there that a lot of people don't like the royal family and won't want to watch. But there will be probably half of the country's population that will be involved in some way, whether it's watching it on the telly, go into the streets of London. Uh, decorating their house so mm-hmm. that everyone will be getting involved buying a t-shirt I've got a t-shirt do you want to see my t-shirt see I've got a coronation t-shirt I see it. to wear so excuse the, the weird sound on the microphone if, if it makes a noise anyway 
Ooh, mm. baby, baby. The baby, baby. Ooh. Mickey's gonna get his t-shirt. Mickey's gonna get his t-shirt. Uh, are, are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> he was there on the bed the whole time. It fucking was, yeah. It's ready for work on Saturday. Oh, wow. One's got this. I love it. Love That's it. The, there you go. Love it. One's got this. <laughs> Well, I will be wearing a royal blue gingham shirt on Sunday with a lovely set of brogues. And that will probably be my attire for the day. Brogues? Oh, uh, yes. Very gentlemanly. Nice. Might have a cigar and a whiskey out the back. Charlie? Light up. Light up for Charlie. Hey, up, Charlie. <laughs> I wonder if drug, drug dealers have put their uh, prices up. <laughs> Imagine that. A royal special. Royal Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Come, and never know. Come and get your white powder. I yeah. should do I should do voices, you know. You do do voices. I do I do voices. Charlie, come and get your powder. <laughs> yeah. There I remember there's a video on our Instagram Reels page. Um and you are you are doing, <laughs> you are pretending to call a particular parlor place. Try pretend parlor, parlor. Bro wanting Bro wanting, place. yeah, wanting to uh, go dressed as Harry Potter. Hmm. And so yeah, that was go watch that. There's lots of funny reels on there because currently our TikTok account we can't get into our own TikTok account. If anyone can help us, because I've been trying for fucking weeks trying to get back into TikTok, it signed me out and it signed you out, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I could not get on TikTok anymore. And our TikTok was fucking flying. We were getting like thousands of views in each little clip video we put up. I'm thinking Can't... if I if I sign out of my own TikTok, I think I'll, I won't be able to get into that either. I think I'll lose it's, it. it's weird. Yeah, I'm signed in through Twitter for mine. Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Who owns TikTok? Is it China? Sort it out. I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think it's the country themselves that own TikTok, but yeah. Is it not? No. Are you God. sure? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely not. All right. Absolutely. So, so for the coronation, good or bad for the country? Good. 100%. Good. Yeah. I, I think it's a positive. I think it will it will turn out well in the end. Everyone's got so many questions, though. Do you know what I mean? It's all, all the questions that people have got. How much is it costing? What's he going to wear? Do you know what I mean? You know. Yeah. What does he wear? Does he wear his? Well, oh, it's the thing. Like, surely he'll be wearing the whole. Does he? Does he wear? Does he wear his like red? army uniform that he's worn in the past and then they have the big shoulder things with the with the crown and the and the uh stick thing with a no, sphere no, all on the top stick? i don't know it's sphere spear i don't know Some, must have a name. someone will know i know the queen queen was buried with hers wasn't it they carried it on top of her coffin didn't they yeah but i'm sure someone swipe out and take it down to catch the birds <laughs> probably yeah, I don't know. Is it? Yeah, that's the point. Is it the same crown that the Queen wore? No, no, no. God, no. Do they have their own crown? Yeah, and I'm sure there is a... I think, well... King Charles II would have worn it last. I'm sure it would probably just, you know... Oh, what do you mean? There's one for a man and one for a woman. King and Queen. So. I don't think they'll be doing new crowns, will they? Like, brand new crowns every time. Oh, are these, they're like replicas. Do you know, like there's replicas. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like 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 Star Wars lightsabers. There's replicas. <laughs> there's the real deal. Yeah. Or Star Wars geeks know there's like graded replicas. I just thought they had just one crown that whoever was I king or queen did. they'd warm. They might do that. And is his crown currently in Tower London now, or is it somewhere else? Like, does it does it have to go somewhere to be cleaned and? It's en route. And <laughs> When brought back to him, like you see some old lady with a tin of brasso just giving it a wipe, <laughs> bit of spit and rub, spit rub on it, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, uh, it's so many questions. Is Harry gonna be there? You know, is it gonna be his whole family? Like, is he allowed to go? I bet he goes, but I don't think I bet Megan doesn't. That's his dad, isn't it? Come on, 
And will he wear a uniform? He's not allowed to wear a uniform now, is he? Oh, that's the thing, right? Via all of that, the Harry thing, I was very, very sad for Harry. Personally, I was very sad for him. I don't, yeah. He doesn't, want he doesn't want sympathy. But he he thought what he was doing was the right thing by his family. And I think he knows it was the right thing for his family. For his but wife and time, his children, yes. He knows that he, in within doing that, he put his own family on the back foot. And I think, I think we'll all be guilty of doing that. We've all, you know, had to make mm. decisions like that where it's like, well, no, I'm going to stand by my family. I made this is family. my new little family yeah. that I have to put you've first. Got to stand by it. You've got to, you know, you've got to, I think you've got to stand by the decisions that you make in your life. You've got to own them. Because if you yeah. don't own them, they just become ghosts of your past. Whether, and you, whether they're just, good or bad. You yeah. Know, like they, say, they, yeah. Just, they don't, be, you, and you just carry it as a burden of going, well, yeah, I fucked up. Well, just own it. Just say, no, I did the right thing. I'm sorry that people were hurt in the process. And he gave a hell of a lot up for that new life. You oh, know, he did, and, definitely. And a lot of, he brought a lot of attention to himself, a lot of anger, a lot of animosity. And a lot of hatred, he all, yeah. He took it all on the chin. Mm. You know, really well. But like, again, nobody knows actually how he's feeling. How the fuck is he feeling about everything that's going on? If, is he welcome in his own country? You know, are people, do people just want to gossip about him? Followed around by bloody newspapers and fucking paparazzi all the time. He served, he did two tours of Afghanistan, didn't he? On the front line in Apache helicopters, shooting down Taliban. It's all not you to know, your uniform. The it's fact that, exactly, the fact that, oh, because you're not no longer an official royal, you can't wear your, your military uniform which if you weren't in the royal family, you could wear your military uniform, I believe, any time at one of these events, I believe. Mm -hmm. So is he going to wear a suit? Come on. You know, wherever you think of him, he did serve this country. Rightfully, you know. Exactly. Honest. Put his life at, at risk. He should be able, I believe, he should be able to wear his, his military uniform with his medals. It does, it yeah. does really so, ends perspective though doesn't it that when you realize about not just his situation but what he earned is never really yours no matter what you earn in your life no matter what title no matter what financial gains or property or anything that you have does not belong to you it can be taken away like like that God. by the institution by anybody yeah. anybody that's what it like is you have, yeah you can have you know, everything that you own right now, you could have paid for it outright. But yet, if somebody says to you, of authority, we're taking that off for you, we're seizing that, we're stripping you of that, they can't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not good, it's is it? Mental. Absolutely mental. Bastards. Fucking bastards. And, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, what a random episode that was. Fuck me. We, I liked it. <laughs> The tangents, the tangents that we can go off is bloody <laughs> ridiculous. I think we reached a, a new level from the coronation to 10 minutes plus about some other Side random track. shit. <laughs> and to be honest, if someone said, oh, what did you talk about? Fuck me, it was all a blur. Fuck knows. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, and this is why maybe we have seven and a half thousand downloads is because people are actually going, fucking, I can't keep up with these two. I'm fucking listening to their podcast and we're getting onto a really good subject and we're talking about Area 51 and the, and the aliens and the next thing, Niall's talking about what he's got in his fridge. It's Where's the aliens? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> thank you yeah. for joining us for seven and a half thousand downloads. Thank yeah. you for being here. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your coronation weekend. Hope you had a lovely time. What did you yeah. get up to? Let us know. Share your photos of what you did. Did you dress up? Did you have the same t-shirt as Mickey? Yes. Do you want to have a chat to us? I want to know. I want. I want to see your t-shirts on any of our social media, please, and uh, we'll sort you out a prize. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? Let's start doing giveaways. Yeah. First question. First person to send their next question gets a prize. 
from one of us. Yeah. Oh, no, me, it'll be big as well. I'll chuck him fucking a mystery box or something. Anyway, <laughs> enjoy your coronation. Deuces. Peace out. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers! The Dads, Lads and Kebabs podcast is available to listen and download on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Podbean and all other podcast platforms.